Would you want to give an example of how you started using this stick? <laughs> and, or you don't have to, but how you started using the stick and then how you use the stick today. Okay, so um, when we first started using the stick, it was to measure the average height. So like I, I wouldn't have considered like what's happening up in the, the canopy per se. Um, the height, then I would throw it on the ground and see how many um, there's, I, I'm assuming all sticks are structured the same way, but there's... They're not actually. Okay. We'll talk about that, yeah. Okay, so then I would count how many, how much I could see on the stick, which would tell me, you know, kind of what is my overall plant growth there. Um, and then I realized that I didn't need the stick. Um, so we use the stick to kind of assist getting our animals into the shoe or my kids use them for science projects when they're making a poster board. Um, so because the sticks I find in our application, you know, don't really measure measure what I'm looking at any longer, but it doesn't mean that we didn't use them at one point. So, you know, just remember that my use of a, a stick now is because we have evolved to this place. Um, but I do feel that they have purpose, um, especially if you're trying to educate yourself about how your pastures are performing. Right. Yeah. So I, that was, that was kind of the main point that I was hoping you would say is just that this is, a, this is a great teaching tool or training tool. So for somebody that has no experience or just doesn't know where to begin or exactly what to do with the grazing, this is a, a fun place to start. It gives you something to look at and, and measure and compare with. But as you evolve and, uh, and develop your grazing system that works for you and works for your animals, uh, this is probably gonna take a back seat or find another use. Um, there's lots of different uses for it. Um, a lot of times with the animals. Probably the most important part about this stick is that it is a guide. It uh, doesn't compare to what you're actually seeing. So be sure to uh, go out to the field, observe the animals, observe the plants, and then change according to what you see out there. But this will give you some idea of what you might expect and how soon you might need to make some changes out there. Um, changes related to how much area you're giving them, how much dry matter. This particular stick, it, made, it only measures up to 12 inches. And uh, the reason for that is because the chart of numbers on here is just calibrated for these 12 inches. So they did some, some research in their location. They would uh, measure the grass at this height, how much that grass weighed when they would cut it at that height, and then they were able to write down those numbers. So for their grazing systems, they were happy to graze uh, basically between the six to 12 inches, and that, that's what worked for them. And so they made the chart according, accordingly. So in this example, uh, the stick is calibrated for around 12 inches of height, up to 12 inches of height, and then the corresponding weight that we would expect to see based on the different uh, common plant types, pasture types that are on here. Uh, some of the different plant types, we've got the orchard grass plus clover, orchard grass and fertilizer or nitrogen, bluegrass mix, bluegrass clover, perennial rye grass. So, uh, just the different types of common grasses out here. If you can identify some of the, some of the different grasses out here, um, you would choose the one that's fairly representative. You'll use that as your guide to estimate how much forage is out there compared to how many animals you need, how much space you want to give them, and that'll give you some idea of how quickly you want to rotate your animals just through there. Uh, drop this just in a representative area, and then you would measure, measure the height. This is a little bit different here, but uh, the idea is that um, if, you had, if you had a piece of paper or something that you could just lay flat on here, where would that piece of paper stop when it comes to, um, when you would come to the, the height of the plants that could hold up that piece of paper that's up there? So you don't want to measure the absolute tallest part of the grass. Uh, you don't want to lift up the leaves to measure how, how long the leaves are. You want to measure, and the way this has been calibrated is the average height of the stand as you're looking at it. So just, just an important point, again, just for calibration and making sure that things are consistent, uh, that you do the same thing year after year after year. So you're looking at the, the canopy height that's on here, and you would measure that. We're gonna have to make up a number here, so we'll just say it's 12 inches. That's height, uh, is our average canopy height. An important point with the grazing that was uh, brought up is that it's really good to 
uh, take half and leave half. And what that means is if our plant height is 12 inches tall, it would, it's recommended to only graze down to six inches. You could take more than that, but there's gonna be some consequences. Uh, if you take half, that means that the plant is going to, it's going to have to lose some of its root mass uh, and it's gonna lose some of its, uh, its, its leaf canopy area. The leaf canopy is where it's getting all of, all of its energy from. It's converting the solar energy to, uh, to plant food, photosynthesis. So uh, if, you, if you take half of it, then that means that the plant is going to be able to re regrow, regenerate faster. If you take more than half of it, that means that it's going to have to slough off more of its root and it's going to have a lot less energy to be able to grow from. So it's gonna to have to use some of its reserves uh, from the roots to create that new canopy, the new leaf area, and be able to regrow that. So there's, some, there's actually some really neat uh, videos online that you can look at to, have, to see a comparison. If you were to cut your plant height at five inches versus three inches, you can actually get at least two or three days worth of growth if you cut it higher. So if you cut it low, that's acceptable, but just understand that there's cause and effect to all these different things. So, uh, so take half and leave half is a very good rule of thumb. So if you've got a high, a high plant height, canopy height, you would want to leave a higher canopy height as well. For the purposes of this uh, demonstration, we're just gonna go with uh, the other symbols that they have on here. Uh, so there's a, there's a little diagram about, uh, it says graze between the, this height. So when the grass height, when the grass canopy reaches this height, this would be a great time to graze. A lot, there should be a lot of leaf area, a lot of forage, high forage quality. So this would be a good time to graze. But you would want to make sure that you stop when you get down to the black mark. So graze on the, the checkered areas, but stop on the black areas. Again, just for, just for example only, uh, if, we were, if we were to say that, uh, if, we, if we grabbed a number in the middle, so the, the two and a half percent or so, uh, for, for every thousand pounds, we would know that we need 25 pounds of dry matter for, for each adult animal. Multiply that times the number of adults. So if we have 10 adults, that need 25 pounds, then we would have, we would know that we need about 250 pounds of dry matter per day. Okay, so that would give us some idea of how much area, how much feed we would need to provide for those animals. Again, it doesn't matter whether it's exact or not. Uh, we could set up that perimeter for, for the one acre, for the, the 10 animals, and come out here 24 hours later and see how do we do. Did we hit the mark? Are we above? Are we below? Are the animals hungry? Are they, are they calling out? Or are they happy? And then we could, we could change things according to, according to that. So if there's more feed uh, standing than we want there to be, we could shrink the area. Uh, if, uh, if the animals are not happy, they want more feed, we could extend the area. Uh, you can also change the number of animals. Uh, you can influence the amount of feed that's in the area. So there's a number of different changes that you can make, but the point is that this just gives you an, an estimate of either how much area, how much feed, or how much time you want to put them in here. So again, if you wanted to do a 12-hour rotation, instead of having one acre fenced off, you would fence off half that, half an acre. And again, that would just give you a starting point. Where do you start? And then you can adjust based on observation.